Hello children. Uh, today in this video, uh, I am preparing the few points which are helpful for uh, objective type of questions as well as XYZ uh, type of questions. It is compulsory. Uh, every child must know all these above points to solve objective and XYZ question. Okay, so after learning all these points, you will get the confidence that 99% of the questions will be solved by your own. Okay, for that one, you have to pause the video and you should make a note of these points. Let us come to the point. Uh, first point is here, the gold and silver are the most malleable metals. Okay, gold and silver are the most malleable metals. Okay. Next, gold is the most ductile metal. See, here gold is involved both in malleability as well as ductility property. Okay, so gold is the most ductile property. Ductile property means drawn into wire. Okay, so for example, from 1 gram of the gold, from 1 gram of the gold, okay, so a wire about 2 kilometers length, you can, can be drawn from, from 1 uh, gram of the gold. How many kilometers? 2 kilometers length wire can be drawn. Okay. So, this property is ductile property. Next, cooking vessels. So, cooking vessels are made based upon the two properties. One is malleability so that they can shape the vessels and the second one is thermal conductivity so that the transfer of the heat for cooking purpose. Okay. Next, the best conductor of heat are silver and copper. Among silver and copper, which is again best one? Silver is the first priority, then copper. Next point. Lead and mercury. Lead and mercury are poor conductor of electricity. Lead and mercury are poor conductor of electricity. Mercury is a liquid metal. Mercury is a liquid metal. And bromine is a liquid non-metal. Once again, I will repeat. Mercury is a liquid metal and bromine is a liquid non-metal. Gallium and cesium have very low melting point. Gallium and cesium have very low melting point. These two metals will melt if you keep these two metals on your palm. Generally, metals have high melting point, okay, but here the gallium and cesium have very low melting point. When you keep these two metals on your palm, they start melting because their melting point is lower than your body temperature. Next, iodine is a non-metal. Iodine is a non-metal, but it shows lustrous property, okay, lustrous properties generally shown by metals okay so iodine is a lustrous non-metal next point diamond is the hottest natural substance and diamond has very high melting point and boiling point basically metals have high melting point and boiling point but here the diamond shows very high, very high melting point and boiling point. It indicates that diamond is a non-metal. It is a allotropy form of carbon, okay, which is a naturally hardest substance, okay, and shows very high melting point and boiling point. This property having similarity with metals. Next, graphite. So, graphite is a good conductor of electricity. So, graphite also one of the allotropy form of carbon. So, diamond and graphite both are allotropic form of the carbon. Okay. But among these two, graphite is a good conductor of electricity. Okay. So, why graphite is good conductor of electricity? Because availability of free electrons in the graphite. Whereas, diamond is not good conductor of electricity, but graphite is a good conductor of electricity. In graphite, electron, free electrons are available. Next point. So, alkali metals. Alkali metals, example, lithium, sodium, potassium are so soft. These are soft metals that they can cut with the help of knife. These are soft metals. Okay, they can cut with the help of 
night and they have alkali metals have low densities that means because of the low densities they float on surface of water and they have low melting point and low boiling point next point copper metal combined with oxygen to form black color substance called copper oxide basically copper metal is a reddish brown color metal okay so it is a reddish brown color metal remember copper is a reddish brown color metal which combine with oxygen or which react with oxygen and it will form black color substance known as copper oxide next amphoteric oxide so amphoteric oxide means the metal oxides which reacts with both acids as well as base to produce salt and water are known as metal uh, amphoteric oxides amphoteric oxides are metal oxides which reacts with both acids as well as bases to produce salt and water are known as amphoteric oxides example aluminum oxide al2o3 and zinc oxide zno next point the soluble metal oxides are known as alkalis alkalis are soluble metal oxides and even soluble metal hydroxide also next potassium sodium metals are kept immersed in kerosene oil or paraffin wax because they react vigorously with atmospheric oxygen or atmospheric moisture to form metal oxides and metal hydroxide and even it catches fire so the potassium and sodium metals are active metals so they immerse inside the kerosene or paraffin wax bottle next point silver and gold do not react with oxygen even at high temperature okay so they are called as noble metals okay so silver and gold do not react with oxygen at room temperature also and even at high temperature also they are non reactive next calcium along with the calcium magnesium metal is there so calcium and magnesium floating on the surface of water okay calcium and magnesium floating on surface of water because of the hydrogen gas formation because of hydrogen gas formed during the chemical reaction okay so that hydrogen gas stick to the surface of the metal so hydrogen is a weightless gas when cal when hydrogen gas stick to the surface of the calcium metal automatically the calcium metal start floating on the surface of the water along with the calcium magnesium also float on surface of water when you compare calcium and magnesium calcium float fast compared with magnesium because release of more amount of hydrogen gas during calcium react with cold water potassium sodium calcium these three metals first three metals in the reactivity series react with cold water next among the in the reactivity series only magnesium react with hot water in the reactivity series only magnesium react with hot water aluminum zinc and iron react with steam aluminum zinc and iron react with steam next point metals such as lead copper silver and gold metals such as lead copper silver and gold they do not react with water metals such as lead copper silver and gold do not react with water next point so hydrogen gas is not evolved evolved means release hydrogen gas is not evolved when a metal react with nitric acid because nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent generally metals react with acids metals react with acids and releases hydrogen gas but whereas in case of nitric acid 
हाइड्रोजन गैस इज नॉट रिलीज बिकॉज नाइट्रिक एसिड इज ए स्ट्रॉन्ग ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट देन विच मेटल्स रियक्ट विद दिस स्ट्रॉन्ग ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट और नाइट्रिक एसिड मैग्नीशियम एंड मैंगनीज आर द टू मेटल्स विच रियक्ट विद वेरी वेरी डाइल्यूट नाइट्रिक एसिड मैग्नीशियम एंड मैंगनीज रियक्ट विद वेरी डाइल्यूट एसिड्स टू एवॉल्व हाइड्रोजन गैस Copper does not react with dilute HCl. All metals react with HCl, but copper does not re react with dilute HCl. So that when dilute HCl added on the surface of the copper metal, copper metal do not release hydrogen gas. Okay. So in this one, the last two points are very very important. So. Uh, point number twenty, twenty one, and twenty three definitely. one or other case it may be in objective oriented questions or it may be a x y z model questions okay so indirectly uh, one question they will frame okay so this is a summary of chapters till reactivity series okay and these points are helpful to solve objective oriented questions as well as x y z questions okay before you are going to attempt any kind of objective oriented or Uh, x y z or p y q type of questions make a summary of these points note these points revise two three times then you try to attempt you feel very easy and within a fraction of minutes or seconds you are able to solve all the questions okay thank you